I've been trying something a little bit different where I've been blocking out my entire day on a calendar just to give myself some sense of direction and also hold myself accountable to something, uh, a goal to the end of the week. And also I've been, I've gotten new mics from DJI because I was getting tired of holding the big one in my pre previous videos. And I also saw a lot of other YouTubers using this mic. So I'll try it out. And for the next couple hours before I go to the gym, I'm just gonna try to crank out some work, be a little bit productive, and we'll see how it goes. So we've been working on a feature that finds warm connections for you uh, based on a text input that you have. So let's say that I was an AI startup that was looking for people just on the cusp of trying to build a startup. That's my ideal customer profile and those are the people I wanna to talk to. If we look at this, let's say we have people who want to start a startup. It'll look through your first degree and second degree connections it will ideally in the future look through other sorts of data sources and find people who you can reach out to and talk to this would be mainly used for idea validation or just trying to find people that you can connect with in terms of mentors ideal customers etc and really help with warm intros right because we found that cold emails have tended to be really bad for reaching out to people As I become more active on Reddit, X, email, and YouTube, one thing that I keep seeing over and over again is MVP as a service or dev agencies offering to build MVP for others. And they're charging, you know, almost $5,000 just to build an MVP in a few weeks. And maybe it's my search history, but I just feel like it's flooding my home pages. When I first started working on this, we built our MVP from the ground up trying to figure out what different dev tools we wanted to try and use, what different services we can leverage to save time. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to open source an MVP boilerplate or template that we use to spin up all of the different MVPs or ideas that we have. Because as founders or even people thinking about business ideas, you want to, you have a ton of ideas and you also probably want to be able to try to prototype a lot of them very quickly. And we open source it because we don't really see a need to pay wallet or make money off of it. And we want to enable people to build it as quickly as possible. Personally, I also don't really want to become a dev agency or an MVP as a service. That's just something that I'm not really interested in. So the idea is that more technical people can just fork it and spin up their own MVP quickly. Lastly, some feedback I got on the landing page was that it was a little bit too generic there wasn't really much to it and it wasn't really clear the problem we were solving or what our pro product actually does. And so I'm going to plan on reworking it for a different idea that I had and see if it's a little bit more clear. One thing I never really got to do was talk about why I quit my job in the first place to start the startup founder journey. Right out of college, I used to work at Microsoft under the Office umbrella. So under office.com, I worked on a pretty small component of that entire service. I would say that's pretty common in big tech where you are part of a team that works on a very small part of a big machine. But the upside is that big machine is used by a ton of people. In our case, half a billion people every single month. So I got to do a lot of cool projects, especially during the, the co-pilot wave. And a lot of my work was rigorously reviewed by you know, really smart people. So I got to learn a lot. The downside is that because we are serving so many people and all the changes that we push out have to be working from the get-go, it did take a lot of time to get these features shipped out. And if anything did go wrong, you would have to spend a lot of time writing an exhaustive post-mortem, essentially a really long document detailing what the root cause was, how you fixed it, how you're going to prevent it from the future. And I left after a couple of years because I just wanted more ownership of my work and a faster paced environment where we'd be shipping more and more. So I joined a early to mid-sized AI startup called Cognitive 
And there I actually got to build a lot of cool stuff. I did a lot of greenfield work and I got to meet a lot of cool people. But as time went on, and I think the desire to start my own company just grew more and more where I really just wanted to jump in and take the plunge. Now at that point, I did save enough money to live for at least a year. So I wouldn't really recommend it unless you were comfortable without having an income for an extended period amount of time or you received funding. A lot of founders that I talk to say, don't do it until you receive funding, right? But if you do have any questions about my previous work experience, I'd be happy to answer them. And until next time.